Welcome to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigili and thank you for watching. Coming up in the next half hour, the Department of Transportation gets ready to launch a new on-demand transit service. The Ride on Flex mobile app is available for downloading. Plus, county officials hosted World Elder Abuse Awareness Day in a continued effort to protect seniors against physical and financial abuse. And later, liquor sales skyrocketed at a county liquor store during a one-day Whiskey Rocks event. But first, students and staff celebrated the last day of school on Friday, June 14th. MCPS TV visited a few of those schools and brings you the sights and sounds of the day. forward to a little rest and relaxation for myself and the rest of the staff. I'm feeling sad because I'm leaving Oakland Terrace and I'm saying goodbye to everybody here, all my friends, and then off to middle school, I guess. I'm looking forward to vacation, spending time with my family. On this, the last day of school, I am feeling uh, just this sense of joy. It was sad to see the kids go, but uh, it's it's exciting that it, we, we did it. We got it all done. This is what we do on the last day of school. I'm going to miss like all the teachers helping each other, helping the students get their grade up. I feel like it's exciting because also next year I get to meet new friends. I bet I'm excited to like go to trainings and kind of rest up a little bit and plan for the new year coming. Definitely a mix of emotions. I definitely am excited for summer like most people are, but I'm really sad to say goodbye to my students. It's bittersweet. This year has been amazing. Um, incredible, incredible, great group of kids. I'm excited for the summer, but I know that this year was like no other. I want to thank all the teachers at Cameron John. They helped sh shape me, mold me to become a better student. I'm going to cherish how I've met new people and um, all the experiences that I've had. In the midst of the county's discussion on community policing, council member Will Jawando was the subject of what he called a pretext stop by a Maryland State Police Trooper. Just a day and a half after hosting a forum on community policing, council member Will Jawando was pulled over in what he called a pretext stop by Maryland State Police. So Saturday morning is my uh, time to go out and get some exercise and like therapy for me, a former college basketball player. I go early and play with a group of friends. Uh, and I left my house about a little after 6 a.m. and was heading down New Hampshire Avenue and uh, stopped at a light near FDA. When the light turned green, he said the trooper's lights came on and he was pulled over. It was a state trooper who said, uh, after approaching the car, that I had stopped past the stop line at the last stoplight. The trooper then asked if the car was his. It was. And the trooper asked if Jawando had any outstanding warrants. Jawando said he didn't know. I kind of knew then that this was a pretext stop, which is when a police officer stops someone for a minor supposed alleged traffic infraction to try to search for a deeper uh, crime, you know, whether it's guns or drugs. The officer asked for his license and registration, which was in his pocket. He carries his registration in his pocket, he said, to save from reaching for his glove compartment. Took that out, handed it to him, and I said, you should just know I'm a county council member. Uh, and he said, what? And I said, I'm on the Montgomery County Council. and and. Uh, he said, oh, and then he walked back to his cruiser, uh, ran my license, I'm assuming, and came back and issued me a warning and just said, have a nice day. Juwando said dozens of people of color have dealt with these stops many times in their lives. And as the situation repeats itself, it doesn't make it any easier. They don't keep us safe, and I think they erode public trust in law enforcement uh, and are used disproportionately when you look at the stop data uh, against people of color, immigrants, low-income people. So I felt it was important to share this 
uh, because I know many people have dealt with it and it's an issue of one, ineffective policing. In Rockville, this is Doug Tolman reporting for County Report This Week. The county's Department of Transportation is getting ready to launch Ride on Flex, an on-demand bus service that will offer service similar to Uber Share Ride. Service will begin on June 26, but the app is already available for downloading. The Ride on Flex is a transit on demand. And what we people need to do is download our Ride on Flex from the App Store and uh, register with their name address, and then they can demand a service. People come pick you up at your corner and will take you to your destination at any corner. So it doesn't have a fixed route, fixed hours, or fixed corridor, or fixed, uh, fixed station. It is virtual station. We basically come to your corner and take you to the corner of your destination. And it's a very simple to do, and all you need is either cash or your uh, smart trip card. When you board the bus, the bus asks you for your name because we want to make sure the only people who get on the bus are the ones who actually made the demand. And then if you don't have your smart card, you can pay cash into the uh, uh, card reader. The pilot program will kick off in two zones in Rockville and Wheaton, Glenmont at a five mile radius from each of these metro stations. The cost will be a flat rate of $2 and youth under 18 years of age can ride right on flex for free. For more information, visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash DOT. The app is called Ride on Flex. Coming up on County Report this week, a beloved police officer was put to rest and it was an emotional community farewell. And county seniors learn how to protect themselves against cyber crimes during World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Those stories and more when we come back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Community members pay tribute to a Montgomery County police officer who will be remembered for his service and sacrifice. Here is the story. Community members gathered at Good Council High in Olney to celebrate the life of Officer Kyle Olinger. Attention all units, 7 George 23, police officer 3, Kyle Olinger is out of service for the remainder. Olinger died in April from gunshot wounds he sustained while serving in the line of duty in 2003. Kyle gave the ultimate sacrifice, uh, which is his life, um, and really in a, a way that uh, we don't see most police officers who actually get injured in the line of duty. He was shot nearly 16 years ago um, and paralyzed from that moment on. He was only with us for about a year before he was shot, but he, he had prior experience uh, with the Reading Police Department in Pennsylvania. He was a former Marine, so he brought a lot of training, knowledge, and experience with him to us. And he was a mentor to some of the younger officers, uh, and even after he was shot and paralyzed, when he was still working around headquarters, uh, just his dedication and his love for the job uh, came through to everybody. Olinger's family moved to Arizona after he was paralyzed. The medical examiner in Arizona ruled that Kyle's death was uh, a direct result of that gunshot wound he sustained in, in 2003. Uh, so the death was ruled as a line of duty death. 
Uh, so as a result, uh, the family wanted to come back to Montgomery County to celebrate Kyle's life with his police family. Have you gotten a chance to talk to his family about how they're doing? Yeah, so they're struggling. They know that Kyle uh, suffered for many years. I had the opportunity to talk to Justin, his son, just to recognize what a fantastic job he did speaking on behalf of his father. His words were so eloquent and his sacrifice so big. And so I just felt the need to thank him. I just told uh, Kyle's mom that on behalf of the United States of America, on behalf of the state of Maryland, and on behalf of the Montgomery County Police Department, that we presented her with this flag in Kyle's memory. And we wanted to make sure that she understood that we love them and that we support them. And that this is that Kyle gave the ultimate sacrifice uh, for this community. Reporting in Olney, I'm Deirdre Byrne for County Report This Week. The county hosted the 9th Annual World Elder Abuse Awareness Day Senior Safety Forum at the Holiday Park Senior Center. Seniors got to learn about personal and financial safety. About 10,000 people a day for the next 15 years are turning 65. So these sort of forums are so incredibly important to know that there are people out there that are preying on people of senior age, 65 and over, whether it's phone calls, financial crimes, and, and really sometimes terrible, actually physical abuse. So these, these seminars provide that education to know where to turn, who to turn to, and if you are sadly a victim of something, really, we are here for you and we will look, at, look into every one of these matters as they move forward. Everyone needs to be safe, especially seniors, and unfortunately we're seeing more and more people that will, that will absolutely look, at sen or look to, uh, to scam seniors. And so our, our police department, our sheriff's department, our state's attorneys, uh, they all have uh, realized this for several years. And of course, the more that we can educate each other, the better off all of us are. One in 10 seniors in America statistically within the next year will be victims of some form of abuse. Now that abuse includes financial abuse, neglect, physical abuse and sexual abuse. So we, financial, financial is probably the biggest component, but we are looking across uh, the entire panorama of forms of abuse to which seniors can be uh, uh, exposed. What does the future of Montgomery County look like? Thrive Montgomery 2050 is our chance to figure out how Montgomery County can be a great community over the next 30 years. Five events held over five days in five council districts will provide the opportunity for residents to learn more about the general plan update and share their ideas about the future. Thrive Week will be a series of public forums from June 26 through June 30th to introduce Thrive Montgomery 2050 to communities throughout the county. Comments, concepts, goals, and recommendations from the public will be recorded at each event by a graphic artist who will use pictures and words to document the feedback. The result of Thrive Montgomery 2050 will be a living and breathing plan that guides decision making and helps secure resources to ensure Montgomery County is a place where everyone can be successful, have opportunities, and enjoy a high quality of life in a beautiful and resilient environment. For more information, go to thrivemontgomery.com. Mark your calendars for the last weekend of June for Heritage Montgomery's annual celebration. This countywide festival on June 29th and 30th provides visitors the opportunity to visit venues from Silver Spring to Poolsville, Bethesda to Clarksburg, and everywhere in between. During the weekend celebration, visitors will discover our area's history and much more. Joining us to tell us a bit more is Sarah Rogers, the Executive Director of Heritage Montgomery. Welcome, Sarah, and what can we expect this year? You can expect a lot this year, and most importantly, it is all free, everything throughout the county. We have over 40 sites, which are parks, museums, historic houses, we have walking tours, we have farms with wonderful farm animals for the kids to look at. 
we've got things up in Poolsville, uh, walking tours, we've got the Warren Historic Church and St. Paul Church, uh, which are African American churches that will have gospel music and tours. Um, we will have then in Brookville, we've got a bike ride to some of the historic houses, walking tours, we've got archaeology of one of the historic mills. We've got the 75th anniversary of the Bill Dawson House, the home of Montgomery history. We've got Native American dancers down at Peerless Rockville. So tons of things to do for young and old. Uh, get in the car, go to three or four things one day, or spend a whole weekend going every place, pack a picnic, and learn more about the history and cultures here and available to us in Montgomery County. Sounds like fun and it's free. You can find out more information about Heritage Days weekend on the web at heritagemontgomery.org. Coming up on County Report this week, the county hit a record in liquor sales, selling over $100,000 during a one-day Whiskey Rocks event. And Council Member Craig Rice visits Magruder High School to learn more about a program that focuses on students' mental health. Stay with us. County Report this week. We'll be right back. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. The Montgomery County Department of Liquor Control set a one-day store record of more than $116,000 in sales during its Whiskey Rocks celebration at the Burtonsville Retail Store. The Whiskey Celebration attracted hundreds of customers to taste and purchase hard-to-find whiskey products. Dozens of customers began lining up the day before the event in order to be at the front of the line when the retail store opened. Well, well I was first in line, which meant I had, to, I had the choice of uh, whatever bottle I wanted that was uh, um, held in reserve for, for the day, and uh, it was a great success. In addition to highly sought after whiskeys, the event featured tastings, raffles, and special barrel releases. If you missed it, there will be more. Another Whiskey Rocks celebration is planned for January of 2020. We're gonna definitely have more of these in the future. We've already had two before this one. Uh, and so we have some bit of experience with it and it's been so successful that we of course wanna to try to do this as much as we can throughout as many stores as we can. We'd like to do it countywide. We're just a bit restricted on the types of product because some of it is so highly restricted and so rare that we couldn't possibly carry all of that in each store. So we're gonna to have to try to logistically work it out, but we'd like to make this an all county event because of the popularity and the success. All profits earned by the Department of Liquor Control are transferred to the Montgomery County General Fund supporting police and fire transportation projects and other public services that tax dollars would otherwise fund. For more information, visit the DLC's website. Good mental health is essential to a child's success in school and in life. At Magruder High School in Rockville, there is a fabulous program that supports students to be their very best. Susan Kennedy reports. It's estimated that 60% of high school students who suffer with a mental health disorder do not graduate. But this year, 18 students who were part of the Magruder High School Enhanced Social Emotional Support Services Program have collected their diploma. And I think that this is probably the most amazing thing that's happened to me so far in my life. Sarah Kessler is one of those graduates. She had dealt with a series of bullying and trauma at her home school that led to depression and anxiety. She was skipping school and her grades plummeted. Her junior year, she enrolled in the Magruder program. Of course, reluctant because I hate change. The so only much. one of its kind um, in Montgomery County. 
She'll tell you with the program, she's blossomed. They are really accepting here, and they also help you by um, implementing you into mainstream classes, which is the classes in the regular um, school. Paul Bash's son, Andrew, did not attend one day of classes in 10th grade. He was so desperate to get him help, he had him hospitalized. And that was probably the low point. But things got much better for the Bash family. Describe this program. And uh, I thought, where the hell has that been? <laughs> <laughs> it's like exactly what we need. Andrew excelled. He took AP classes, graduated, and plans to study computer science at the University of Maryland. We need to do more uh, in meeting the needs of our kids throughout the county. Having a regionalistic approach, sheer number of students that they're able to accommodate and the waiting lists that they have for this program means that we want to open up access to more kids who we know would be able to benefit from the particulars of this program. But for Kristen Eccleston, one of the best parts of creating this learning environment is watching the students who once struggled to fit in find a place where they can be themselves. They're able to make these connections and feel comfortable with peers because they're not that odd man out. It's a fresh start with peers who understand where they're coming from. And that is the stuff that's most important with peers, with friends, to have friends to call. And I, I just, I love that. And I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. When the county's population is as diverse as it is, Communicating in English doesn't always reach everyone. This is why Montgomery College is trying a new approach. Career seekers who don't speak English have found a new way to connect with Montgomery College, and it's just a click away via their social media account through a new series of sessions called Frequently Asked Questions Live in various languages. MCTV has put on a series of Facebook Live events during which folks uh, talk about the most frequently asked questions in regards to the college and admissions and enrolling and registering here. Um, and we recently put one on in the Korean language um, during which a Korean speaking student and I got together and answered questions about how to get started at MC and about the admissions process here, as well as English classes that are available and other ways to get plugged into the community and get connected. These sessions are hosted through Montgomery College's Facebook page and have become a popular forum to answer questions in real time and in people's native language to include Spanish, Vietnamese, Amharic, French and Korean. Ya que mi inglés es muy poquito, entonces... Since my English is limited, I've searched for information on the Facebook page and I've received a lot of information. And it was very helpful because now I started studying at MC after 20 years since I left school in my country. With increasing demand for information, new topical sessions on specific careers or programs have popped up in English as well we decided to do an international student live FAQ. And it was very successful. I was looking at our post today and we had 353 engagements, 26 shares, 21 comments, and 1,000 views. So we are looking forward to do another one in the fall. To view previous sessions, visit the MC Facebook page video section. For County Report This Week, I'm Carolina Galeano. Coming up on County Report This Week, the annual farm tour and harvest sale is happening at the end of July. And a reminder to Rockville register voters this year. Your city election vote is by mail. Stay with us, we'll be right back. History comes alive during Heritage Day's weekend. Discover Montgomery County's historical treasures during this free countywide event. The two-day festival offers visitors an opportunity to sample numerous sites representing the history, culture, and natural beauty of Montgomery County. So join us for Heritage Days all over Montgomery County. For more information, call 301-515-0753 or go to heritagemontgomery.org. What will Montgomery County look like in the year 2050? This is our chance to figure out what the future of the county can be and how it will grow so that every resident can have the opportunity to thrive. 
Montgomery County can be a place where we invest equitably in our communities to make them vibrant and safe for all ages and incomes to work, live, and play. Together, we can set a vision for the infrastructure that connects our residents and creates a roadmap for a more sustainable, responsible, and prosperous county. Let's plan our future together. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Fagelli. The Montgomery County Office of Agriculture is hosting the 30th Annual Farm Tour and Harvest Sale on Saturday, July 27th and Sunday, July 28th. Joining us to preview the tour is Agriculture Director Jeremy Chris. Thank you for being here and what should we know about this year's tour? Well, thank you, Lorna, for having me here today to showcase our 30th Anniversary Farm Tour and Harvest Sale. Montgomery County is very proud to have an agricultural reserve that encompasses one-third of the county and over 93,000 acres and we also have the highest percentage of farmland protected under easement than any other county in the nation. So annually the agricultural industry contributes 282 million dollars to the county's economy and we have over 500 farmers that employ about 10,000 residents. The farm tour is a tremendous opportunity for the residents of the county to get out into the farm community and experience the farm and to have a really good time to see all the things that the farmers have to offer. On Saturday, we'll have 19 farms that are featured and on Sunday, we're gonna have 13. So the farm tour is a great time to either buy local or to pet animals and to just experience the farms. Sounds really exciting. Now, where can we find out a little bit more about those participating farms? So if you visit the Montgomery County Office of Agriculture's website, we have the farm tour brochure that people can access to pick any of the farms that they want to go that are open on both days. Thank you for being here. And for more information, go to montgomerycountymd.gov slash ag services. Rockville residents will be the first in Maryland to vote by mail for the city's next mayor and council. Rockville 11's Great Buchanan has what you need to know before Election Day. On November 5th, Rockville residents will be the first in Maryland to vote by mail for the city's next mayor and council. From when you can expect your ballot to how you can vote at your own convenience, Rockville 11 has what you need to know so you can do your civic duty. First, you must be registered to vote. If you are a U.S. citizen and live within the Rockville city limits and will be 18 by Election Day, November 5th, then you are eligible to vote. And there are several different options to register in person. At Rockville City Hall, a public library, a post office, or the MVA. You can even register online at rockvillemd.gov election. If you are already registered, make sure your address is up to date so your ballot gets delivered to the correct address. In early October, Rockville's registered voters will receive a ballot. Once you get your ballot, you can fill it out and return it by mail using a postage paid envelope. A secure drop box will be available at City Hall with 24-7 monitoring if you prefer to deliver it in person. On Election Day, there will also be a vote center at City Hall open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. All ballots must be received by 8 p.m. on Election Day. Rockville's vote by mail election is November 5th. You can get more information about the election at rockvillemd.gov slash election. For County Report This Week, I'm Craig Buchanan. County Report This Week has been a collaboration between the Montgomery County's public education and government PEG cable television channels. We've been honored to bring you Montgomery County news for the last nine years. We've aired a new episode almost every week of the year for over 475 episodes. Now we're looking to make some adjustments. We're asking you, our audience, what we've done well, what you like to see changed, and how we should move forward. Send your comments and suggestions to countyreporttw at gmail.com. And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I am Lorna Virgili, 
and thank you for watching.